Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, manna was falling from heaven. This week, water is miraculously burbling up from a rock. We're reading story after story of God providing for God's people in the wilderness. And still the Israelites struggle to trust. We've actually already read this text once this year in worship. It was one of our Old Testament readings back in March for the third Sunday of Lent, or perhaps we might remember it better this year as the second Sunday of COVID, the second week in which we had to suspend in-person gatherings and move our worship online. And you know, I have to wonder, of all the stories in the Bible, many of which we hardly ever or never read and worship, how did this one make it into our lectionary twice in one year? It's a great story to be sure. The Israelites are thirsty in the desert and God miraculously provides water. But there are plenty of miracle stories, plenty to choose from. What makes this one worthy of a double dip? I think it may have something to do with the question at the end of the reading. The story ends with the narrator's summary statement. The Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Is the Lord among us or not? In our journey of faith, that's the question, isn't it? Is God really with us? Is there someone out there or are we all alone in this mess? And if God does exist, does God even care what's happening to us or are we left to fend for ourselves? I've asked that question before. Maybe you have too. When we or someone we love is sick or dying, when a family member becomes estranged or a relationship comes to an end, when we look at the world stage and evil seems time and time again to be triumphing over good, God, you said when we walked through the valley of the shadow of death, we could fear no evil because you would be with us. So where are you? Scholars debate the physical location of Rephidim where this story takes place, but emotionally and spiritually, I think we know where Rephidim is. It's in the depth of the wilderness. It's that place where God seems absent where our faith can no longer sustain us. The place where we fall to our knees and cry out, God, we are thirsty. And if you are here, if you still care about us, do something about it. Is the Lord among us or not? The question that the Israelites ask is universal, but their context is specific and it matters in the story. This morning's reading does not take place in a vacuum. In fact, it's the third of three wilderness stories in which the Israelites cry out and God answers. First, there's Exodus 15, where they stumble across water, but it's too bitter to drink. And so they cry out to God who makes the water sweet. 
The second story, Exodus 16, we read last week. The Hebrews cry out in hunger and God rains down manna from the heavens. All the way back to the burning bush, the people have cried out and God has provided. So that by the time we get to this morning's reading, we know that God is going to save them, to provide water, to quench their thirst. God provides every single time. And yet still God's people struggle to trust. Why is it so hard for them? Why is it so hard for us? Why do we get so wrapped up in fear, so desperate that we try to do it all ourselves? Why is it so difficult for us, so contrary to our nature, to relax and let God be God? Maybe that's the effect that the wilderness has on us. It's hard to have faith in the wilderness. In the wilderness, the logic of fear replaced the logic of trust and even the logic of experience, the knowledge that God has come through before and therefore will likely come through again. We do strange things in the wilderness. Sometimes we lose track of who we are Sometimes, like the Israelites, we hang on to unfounded fears and visions of the past that don't serve us any longer. Because what else is there to hold on to in the wilderness? I've had several conversations with colleagues this week with other ministers and church leaders And everyone I've talked to seems weary. I feel that weariness. Maybe you do too. Six months is a long time to wander in a virtual wilderness of online worship, of distanced mission and reduced fellowship. We want this to be over, but all the reliable information that we're hearing from studies of aerosols to the second wave of COVID hitting Europe to that deep gut sense that we dare to call the Holy Spirit is telling us that it is not yet safe to return to business as usual. That it will be a while before we can in good faith gather for worship the way we used to. This news makes us weary, and when we get weary, we get afraid, or I do, at least. We start asking questions, start asking if we keep this up, if we continue to err on the side of caution, what will happen to the church? Will people leave? Will people decide that the church is irrelevant or just not much fun anymore? Will people stop giving? Will we have enough money to keep staff paid to maintain the building so that it can house our ministry when it's safe to return? When this is over, what will be left of what we know as church? Is the Lord among us or not? Can we follow God in this new and uncomfortable way? If we don't get back in that building, will we kill this church? We do strange things in the wilderness. All of us do. We stop trusting God and we try to play God. 
we take things into our own hands. We try to do and to do and to do because it is so hard to trust in the wilderness. The wilderness is a place where the logic of trust quickly wears out. Is the Lord among us or not? Maybe. Maybe like the ancient Israelites, we owe it to ourselves to zoom out a little bit to see the bigger picture. To hear our own story, our today, our right now in the context of the story of the church. Of the story of how God has provided for God's people time and time again how the church as a whole and, and our congregation in particular have been through hard times and painful struggles and how God has always brought us out the other side. We ask ourselves and one another, will the church survive these COVID times as if we ever had the power to make or break the church to begin with. Friends, the church belongs to Christ and Christ is taking care of us. We are okay. Look around, we have dedicated disciples, thriving mission, money in the bank, a plan to take care of a building that needs work, a Zoom room full of Christians who will not let anything keep us from trying to follow Jesus. We're in the wilderness and the wilderness can be a scary place. But like the Hebrew people, we are not alone because the wilderness is a place where the Holy Spirit thrives, where she blows through weary and fearful people and uses these same weary and fearful ones to do her very best work. Is the Lord among us or not? Friends, look around. Zoom out and look at our story. For we are not alone, never have been, never will be. The God who has been our help in ages past will be our hope for years to come. So let's listen, shall we? for the new thing that God is doing with us. For the Lord is indeed with us and we worship a God who will not let a single soul stay thirsty, not even in the wilderness. Thanks be to God.